This is Dawn's favorite song, by the way. Yes, and... wake up, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. She even she even adopts the gruff radio gal voice. Female rock jock Dawn over here on the wake up call, and uh, of course, Robert. Both of them from the Secret Wine Society, a, a little secret down there in Oakland, Oregon, located, nestled there just off of I-5. Welcome back. Yeah. Hey, we're glad to be back. And I, I have a quick question for you. Okay. I just noticed a little flying monkey sign. Flying What's monkey. that all about? The flying monkey sign? Well, I just noticed it. It's been there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a few years ago, the Eugene Chamber of Commerce had this. They have these things called business after hours. Flying monkey. Flying monkey. And the theme that particular year was the Wizard of Oz. And our rep here that works with the Eugene Chamber came in and said, "Well, you know, it's the Wizard of Oz. What do you what do you want for you know to represent your station that represents the Wizard of Oz?" And I just I you have without to go. thinking said flying monkey. Yeah, we need flying monkeys. That's pretty good. You have to go with the flying monkeys. Yeah, and the the flying monkey is carrying our logo. Yeah, so that's, it's that's great. Okay, so that's where the flying monkey came from. <laughs> I, I had to ask. I've, that's kind of yeah. You, you I can, love it. You could walk into this studio and spend hours playing I Spy. Yeah, that's kind of true, actually. You know. Like, for instance, find the hot chocolate, which... I don't see the hot chocolate. I see a rat, and I see a Batman. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff. The hot chocolate's over there in the bookcase. Got it. Yeah. All right. Anyway. All right. Well, let's talk some sake. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about the kind of sake where they add just a tiny bit of brewer's alcohol. Correct. And... Reading about this, I figured, you know, oh, th- th- this is, they're just trying to jack up the alcohol content, increase their output. You know, it's a way to kind of water it down. And actually, it's none of those things. So, correct. It, it, it actually was for a while. Um, so, the general term is called adutan, and that's just a contraction of tenka. that's a Japanese term for added alcohol. And this goes way back. A lot of people think it, it started during World War II when they had a rice, short, rice shortage. And at that time, they were making added alcohol to do just what you said, to dilute it, because they didn't have enough rice to go around, so they would add distilled alcohol to make something just to keep everybody you know, at least happy during the war, so they had something to drink. But that was called Sanzoshu, and that had a very bad reputation. But the whole concept of adding alcohol to sake goes back. I don't know if uh, I sent you that link, but mm-hmm. do you remember 1687, there was a book called the Domo Shuzoki that translates as the Idiot's Guide to Sake Brewing. <laughs> it literally does. So they had an Idiot's Guide. Before, you remember, I think it was the 80s. You remember all those dummies yeah, guys? 80s and 90s, yeah. Yeah, you had to kind of like, they were actually pretty decent books, but, you know, mm-hmm. it was kind of embarrassing to buy them. But So they had, it was literally called the Domo, which means dummy. Shizoki is like a brewing book. So they, in that book, that was uh, 1687. They don't know who wrote it. It was published in 1687, but he recommended um, adding shochu, which is a distilled alcohol. Made out of cane sugar. Correct, to the final mash. And that would basically give it a little more structure and tighten everything up and also pull out more aromatics. So, and then the war comes, and so they start adding too much, and that's when it got a bad reputation. But now they're using it basically to pull out more esters, and I really love these. So... They have um, several grades. Mm-hmm. Now, you remember the very first show we did? We did the Futsushu. So let, we're going to put that aside because you don't see that much anyway. That will be an Aditen Sake. Those have, most of them will have uh, alcohol added. Then you get into the premium sake category, and this would be the first level. So they call these Hon Jozo, which means the standard brew or the true brew. And this as, is as opposed to Junmai. Yeah, which is just water and rice. Correct. 
So you could have a Ginjo, Dai Ginjo. You could have something way more polished, but it's not going to have that word Junmai in there. Mm-hmm. But so this is the entry level added alcohol. It's going to say on the label Honjozo, um, and they're fantastic values. So the first one we're going to go with is this uh, Matsunoe. It's got the little bonsai on the front. That's a cool bonsai. Label. It is. I love this. Now we're going to introduce another term. So you guys have that. Oh. Oh, here we go. Let's try this one real fast. I can't wait. Wow. It's kind of dry. Yeah. And, and that, obviously, probably the alcohol. And this one is like 15% alcohol. 15% so, alcohol? Actually, not a lot. You would assume like they would add a lot. Well, so these both of these sakis today are from Niigata. So Niigata is on the Sea of Japan. It's the snowiest area. In Japan, they famous for skiing, hmm. but the style they're going for it's a super clean style. Now this is a little more umami driven, a little more nutty. The next one is going to be a more typical one, but this is called Matsunoe Lone Pine. And there's another term on here we need to know, which we haven't gone over yet. It's called Tokubetsu. Now being a Honjozo, this has to be minimum of seventy percent milling rate but they've taken it down to 58. So because they've gone over and above, tokubetsu means special. So they're putting that on the label to tell you that they've done something extra. So wondering about this one. I do get the nut. Almost like uh, walnut. Yeah, It's got that something about the walnut flavor. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I agree. What do you think, Rob? I like it. I I just I can't get over. I mean, the the stuff that I feel like I drink before at sushi restaurants, I don't even consider sake anymore because everything, even what you've cons or we've you know considered. I know one that Bill didn't like. I I thought was I think that was a couple of d- weeks ago. Delicious. It, I mean, and this one uh, unique but very good. Yeah, so the um, rice in here. I feel like I need to put ice in this, though. You you probably could. You could you you could actually drink this on the rocks. Mm-hmm. So it's, this it's not because of the alcohol content, though. It's because of the taste. I mean, it's just this is closer to in taste to me than the way that it feel is is like a spirit as opposed to what we've been. Yeah, drinking it, before is sake. This is this is almost like a spirit. Yeah, this one doesn't have that like more mm-hmm. luxurious mouthfeel. Now the next one will be a little closer to that, but this one's using two rices, so they're using gohyaku mangoku and one called yuki no se. And this brewery was started in 1895. It's called Matsuno Ishuzo. And they are in, like I said, Niigata, so it's a very snowy area. And they're known for having a really super clean style like this. Um, they call it Tande Katakuchi, like Katakuchi is our word for dry. Mm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so they go back, they're on the main island, like I said, and the Toji in this case, is his name is Yutaka Furusawa. He's the fifth generation of the family to run the place. So, yeah. so at least they got a little experience to know what they're doing. They're not some amateurs. Correct. Well, wait you we know get... why your amateurs doing this? Well, the next one we're going to in a minute here. These guys by amateurs. Three hundred years. I think. I, I think it's seventeen. Let's see, seventeen seventeen. Wow. So yeah, they've been doing it a while. Okay. Is that what you're drinking now, or are you drinking the stuff that we were drinking before? I'm still going on this, and we're going to move to the next one because you'll really like this one. There's a nice story. You can tell by the label. There's got to be something. Well, I was going to say it's got something that sort of looks like a cross between Bigfoot and a Pomeranian on it. Yeah, so how would you describe the Bigfoot and Pomeranian? But now, okay, so go, let's go ahead and pour this while <laughs> we're talking a, about it. It looks to me like a, like a cross between a Bigfoot and a Pomeranian. Okay, so yeah, that character on the front is um, it's called Yuki Otoko, and that's their word for Yeti. So in well, I was half close. You you are now. There's something. So this is basically their Bigfoot. Niigata has a Bigfoot, 
and you'll notice though it's a little different than our bigfoot so if you look at the yeah he's got a backpack on well it, it's actually what that is is see their bigfoot is a little bit different he actually helps weary travelers carry their luggage over the mountains he doesn't cap you or steal your credit cards like our bigfoot i mean i don't, I don't even know but so he's a sherpa yeah, he's basically he's he's a, he's, a, he's a Bigfoot Sherpa. Well, there's also another story where he, um, if children aren't good, he'll kidnap them and take them in the woods. So it's kind of a dual purpose. <laughs> what does Bigfoot. he do with them when he, once he gets them to the woods? I'm not really sure. Got to train them with the survival skill. What survival, survival skills? skills? Oh, okay. I don't think the kids ever I don't come think back they can though. Survive in the wood nowadays. No. So he doesn't eat them or anything. Well, you know, he it's just funny. takes them off and dumps them <laughs> down a ravine. I don't know. They don't come back. I remember our Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? He had the child catcher. He's kind of like that. Yeah. You know, if you're no oh. good, he comes to get you. All right. So this one is. Uh, this wow. Is, this is so different from the previous one. Yes. So they're aiming for the more traditional style. So the first one is aiming for like that nuttier, more umami driven. But this uh, Yuki Otoko, or the Yeti, now the rice is different here, so let's see what they're using. They have two types. It looks like hmm. Gohyakumangoku and Koshi Ibuki, which is kind of a hybrid. But that's got a little more of the mouthfeel that you mm -hmm. have come to... Let's see. Let's try this guy. To me, it's a little bit more brash than the other one. Mm. It's louder. Yeah. Mm. Brash is a good word. Yeah, it is. It's just, it's loud. So these guys have been doing this since 1717. So I think they've learned something by now. But what we want people to realize is that these Honjozos are going to be the inexpensive step into alcohol-added sake. They're going to have that kind of a clean flavor. They're not necessarily going to have that texture like the Jumais mm -hmm. have. And this is a special style from Niigata. So we'll bring some in later of alcohol-added, but they're not going to taste exactly like this. Like when you said uh, they remind you more of distilled like yeah, a spirit. Yeah, it was the first one in particular. That's kind of the style. Like, And, and these came became famous in Japan when they got, when Asahi Super Dry became famous. Everyone wanted dry, dry, dry. That's during the bubble period of Japan. Everyone wanted dry. Asahi Super Dry changed the landscape. Because everybody wanted that super dry, clean flavor because the beer was super dry and it kind of bled over into the sake industry. So, you know, we've talked about before about how sake is kind of this fast growing thing here in the U.S. Is the reason, is it, do you think it's a trendy thing or do you think it, has more legs to it as in people are discovering and going god this is actually good i think it's got legs um there's a certain cachet is to drinking or getting onto a new trend so there's partly it's that but the other part is there's a lot more information out there now just like i got into gardening you know if you have something wrong with your plant you just look it up and you can figure out what you know what's going on with this plant what does this plant need why is this tree leaves why do they have holes in them what bug is it but you can find your answers more quickly nowadays so i think people are you know because the labels are abstruse they it's like what are these but you can look it up now a lot more simply than you could even a few years ago and like I said, Japan's got a real push to export. So the education, the more websites, you know, a lot of the Japanese websites, they don't translate well or they don't have a good English translation at all. There's no English page. But you're starting to see those increase where people can actually go to the website of the brewery and find out some information. So I think it has legs because, I mean, literally the, there's a lot of information but it wasn't very accessible, but it's becoming accessible. So, I mean, even the stuff, 
that you guys have had up till now, you, you're starting to learn the terms. You know, you know what June Mai means. You know, now you know a whole Jozo is going to be alcohol added. And there's probably 12 to 15 terms maximum. And once you learn them, and just by seeing them over and over again, you'll learn them, you kind of have a good idea what you're drinking. If you go into a shop, now each producer is going to have a different style. The rice might be a little different, but like the milling rate, the same my boy, like all these terms, once you wrap your brain around them, it's a lot easier to go into a shop and make a selection and have a pretty good idea what's in the bottle. I mean, up till now, you've been, you know, people go to Japanese restaurants. That's the only place they would, you know, encounter sake. But you're not going to have all like a style like this. Like you wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. have this with the fish. You might want a little more texture. But, you know, so all these things have a place. But now it's starting to show up in other restaurants with other types of food. So, yeah. Robert and Don joining us from the Secret Wine Society. We need to take a break here, Rob. Sure. Probably be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break and back with more of the Secret Wine Society after this. All right. Robert and Don, the Secret Wine Society, our remaining couple of minutes. And um, what's the takeaway here? Takeaway is that you, so sake is very versatile. And what you'll find with these, especially these alcohol added, and we're going to get into this in more depth later, these actually would be very delicious at a range of temperatures. So if you were to take something like a very purified, some of the stuff we had before, these Daigin Joes, you're going to have to chill them. Now, I've chilled these, but these actually would be good at room temperature and probably even better warmed up. But that's something for later because what we'll have to do is actually bring some thermometers and get everything. Well, we'll have one of these sakes. We'll drink it at like four or five different temperatures. So sake is super versatile. Honjozo is the entry level alcohol added. They're not expensive. Absolutely delicious. And there's so many types out there. So how many different varieties do you have? I mean, because you have so much wine at the Secret Wine Society. I'd, How many different types of sake do you have? I'd say right now like 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, too, it's more akin to beer where if you have or find a bottle that you like because it's brewed sort of, not brewed, but it's fermented from grain, more of the change comes or the manipulation happens in the brewery, just like beer. In other words, if you have your favorite beer, that beer should be the same every year. It'd be mm -hmm. unimaginable to go in every year like, and beer would have a vintage where next year it's terrible. So there's a house style. The, the rice is going to come in very close. Most of the action happens in the brewery. So one good thing about it, once you find one you like, it's going to taste basically very, very close every time you pick up a bottle. Unlike wine. Correct. The other thing is once you drink it, you can leave them open for weeks or months. So you don't have to finish the bottle right away. Unlike wine. Correct. And it's, unlike beer, it doesn't lose its fizz. Right. Because it has no fizz. Well, and there's times you spend a lot of money on a bottle of wine and it'll collapse overnight from the oxygen if you don't drink the whole thing. So that's, or it'll lose its snap or freshness. And some of these has actually improve and smooth out and get a little rounder. So we'll We play. actually opened those two last night on purpose. So it would kind of have some air in. So today it would taste a little bit different. Yeah, like the Yukio Toko, like it's very forward and brash. Mm -hmm. But I opened it last night just to tone it down a little more. So I mean, it's intense when you first pop the bottle. Rob, by the way, had a little bit of a critique of my calling it loud and brash. <laughs> and I'll let him describe why he wasn't fond of that. No, it, you, no, you, mis, you mistook. I, I said loud and brash. I think some people might take that as a negative connotation where it's a, a description of it that, that it was had a a more intense flavor compared to the one before that. 
but you still liked it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't mean that as a derogatory no. statement, but I can see where it come across that way. Well, no, as soon as they press the sake, that's a term that they use. Like, when you first press it, that first run that comes out is called, it's, it is brash. It's, like, very, but even some wines are like that. Some wines just, they're snappy. The acidity is super high. I mean, it depends on what you want. And, you know, those expensive Ginjo styles are going to be rounder. They mature mm -hmm. them. These aren't going to be matured very long at all. All right. So with that, uh, you got to wrap things up, getting close to the top of the hour here. How long do we have, Rob? A uh, minute and a half. Oh. All right. Okay. You guys got plans for the weekend? Uh, not really. So I'm thinking that people could maybe go down to the Secret Wine Society in Oakland and uh, check out some great wine or maybe a couple of the different types of really cool beers you have or maybe uh, taste a little sake. Yeah, so what we've done is like these little cups, like these sake cups here, we, we glass pour these because a lot of people won't necessarily want to buy an entire bottle of something if they're not sure they like it. And this is very easy to glass pour because it doesn't go bad for a very long time. And that way you can taste through several different types and get an idea of what this stuff is all about. Okay. There's no substitute for tasting. For folks that uh, want to find you, if they're headed down south from Eugene, I-5 south to exit. Exit 140, and we're literally a minute and a half off the freeway. It's very simple. So right there in downtown historic Oakland. Robert, Don, have a great Memorial Day weekend. We will. Yes, you Thanks. Thank Thanks you. for coming in. Good okay. to see you.